Okay, I'll get started in just a sec. All right, so back onto the Mandalorian. Been um, uh, working in Seabrush this week on the um, the fabric, the cloth, and started working with Seabrush about um, about a year ago. But I haven't used it a lot, and it's been fun to um, watch a bunch of tutorials and just dig into it a little bit more. I'm slowly starting to understand it a little better. Um, obviously, it's going to take a long time to get that uh, to get that down, but I think I've managed to get the cloth looking reasonable. Um, it's one of those situations where you know what you want, but you just don't quite have the skills to get it exactly how you want it. Um, but I think I got it fairly close, and um, I'm in a situation now where I'm just I brought everything back into Cinema using the um, using the GoZ workflow which worked really well. So I was able to do all the sculpting in ZBrush and then just one click to bring that back across to Cinema and that's what I've done. Um, and I'll just go across to, let's go across to ZBrush now. Um, you can see it's got the tag, it's got the little ZBrush tag there. If I click on it, you can actually see the polygroups that I set up in ZBrush, which is really nice. Um, and if I actually come up and click on Gozi Exporter, that should launch ZBrush. Hey Samuel, Anchor, Guido, nice to see you again. Whoa, look at that screen, wow. Okay, so there's... um. There's ZBrush. Let me just hide the, um, the comma key. Just hide that guy. Um, and I should be able to just click and drag and come up here and hit edit. And there's the, um, there's the file from Cinema. I can keep working on that, sculpting, and then I can click up here on GoZ and that drops that straight back into Cinema, which is a really nice workflow. So although I don't have all of the skills in ZBrush yet, I can, I can use all of my hard surface skills and my general modeling skills in Cinema, come across here to ZBrush, um, do a bit of ZBrush practice, and then go back across to Cinema and, and keep working. So um, let me just open up uh, a recent file, open a light box. Um, here's the actual, is that the one? Uh, yeah, that one there. So here's the, here's the one I was working on. 
and it's fairly high poly um, you can see that's really high poly I'm still not like I said I'm still not um, that experience with ZBrush and getting the workflow correct and um, correct techniques but you know it takes a bit of time um, but what I did was I, I um, sculpted this out and then I remeshed it using um, using um, Z remesher and then I took that back across to um, back across to cinema so and I use the um, the dynamic cloth settings in here um, to um, and the cloth brushes to get this to look uh, I get, I look fairly reasonable like I said not a hundred percent happy with it but it's close enough so I'm going to just close that up because I'm not going to use your brush today yeah I didn't need sculptress um, there's so many different tools for, for to, to do the same thing. Um, I I wanted to get enough um, of a cloth look into this. Um, let me just quickly render that. I wanted to get enough of a cloth look into this so it looks like actual cloth, but I didn't need too much detail because I'm going to actually put in the stitching and extra detail um, in Substance Painter, and I'm going to actually do some um, remodeling. To put a little bit of extra detail in Cinema 4D as well. So there's a bunch of different ways to do things. Um, I guess it depends on what workflow you prefer. So what I'm doing today is um, you can see the gun is um, is only a stock. It's nothing more than that. I've actually been working in um, Moai 3D to do the gun, which has been interesting. Might have a look at that today too. Um, but what I'm doing now is I've brought all of the cloth back in. And I'm just manipulating it in here in cinema, just using the brush tool, um, relaxing it, just cleaning up the mesh. Um, might add a little bit more detail. Just make sure everything's sitting correctly. Might have to move the um, the bandolier across a little bit. I removed some of the strap because I'm going to redo the the gun, the uh, the rifle strap. Because what I'll do this week is actually do in ZBrush. I'll do the the cape. And the cape um, has to sit in this area here, and it has to sit over the pouch and bandolier, but the actual strap sits over the cape. So what I'll probably do is, when this is all prepared, I'll take all of this across to ZBrush, and then I'll use cloth and dynamics to, um, to push the cape into position around all of these objects. So that should be interesting as well. Um, so it's taken a bit of time but getting there now and once that's all done i will go back across to Ryzen uv and fully unwrap this in a, in the live stream so um we might get kirsten back in as well to um give us some more tips hey shadow so any questions just shout them out um any um suggestions just shout them out uh, i'm going to keep working So I was pretty happy if I just solo the, um, let's come back to here. Now I just press Alt 3 and that's using HB modeling bundle. So that's using the selection HB selector. Anything my cursor is over, if I press Alt 3, it will select that. It's been so good in cinema to be able to do that. And just solo that. So there's the, um, uh, the top, I guess it's the suit. It's not really a flak jacket. Um, and if you just come up here and solo that. Uh, Alt 4 will add to the selection. So solo that so I can get both. So there's the, there's the longer sleeve. Now that's obviously connected to the actual um, shirt. But for my, for my sakes, I just did that separately. But it looks like it's, I guess it kind of looks like it's connected. Um, and I've just been checking out the geometry because this was re, um, re topologized using Z remesher in Substance Painter, oh, not Substance Painter, in ZBrush. Um, so now I'm going to grab the brush tool, MC, make sure that I have smooth 
active. I'm in polygon mode. I'm just going to smooth out some of these areas. So I can do it that way, or I can you know, select a bunch of polygons and I can use HB Relax. If I hold down Control, it will maintain the shape of that as well. But I've got to make sure I've got no tag selected. Uh, top, there we go, I had two selected. So holding down Control, hitting Relax. There's a fair few polygons in there. I think I've already relaxed this. So it's a little bit slow. There you go, you can see that starts to relax. But holding down Control, it will maintain the shape. So just looking through here and seeing if I can see any areas that are a little stretched. Holding down Control, hitting Relax. Well, I don't think, uh, Grid, I don't think Cinema 4D is limiting my workflow. I'm just, I'm just used to hard surface modeling in Cinema 4D. I have started learning Blender, but I have to say it's it's a bit of a slog, um, and I and I got sidetracked on ZBrush, and I'm kind of enjoying ZBrush a little more, and I have invested money in ZBrush. Uh, I think ZBrush is a perfect addition to Cinema 4D, uh, to be to be honest. You can do hard surface modeling using um, in ZBrush, but I'm just slowly adding to my skill set. You know, I've done a lot of hard surface modeling, and I don't haven't done a lot of this organic modeling. And I like the combination of the two, so I, I will I will continue to increase my improve my um, sculpting skills, um, and uh, you know just keep adding to it. So this is kind of stretched out here. You can see how actually if I just go into point mode, whoops, just pressed O there, um, M O for the slide tool, just slide that out. But also once again, just selecting areas and control, hitting HB relax a few times. This is not super necessary, but you know, I like to keep my meshes fairly neat. Just selecting a bunch of polygons around that area. Control click that a few times there we go it's looking good this is really stretched out here like I said it's not going to make a huge amount of difference but you know I'm a creature of habit and I like to keep these things pretty neat just in case. It's a little bit um, unresponsive because there's a fair few polygons in there. Yeah, that's not great, but that's fine. Um, that's weird. Look at that guy there. So just going through and checking this out. Uh, let's see if I can just grab that point. Shoot that back across. So we did do a stream um, with Kirsten from Ryzen UV last week, and uh, although it was um, very interesting, unfortunately, I can't get this guy back in place. Unfortunately, my setup wasn't ideal, and it, it was a bit laggy. Um, I'll be sure to have ironed out all of those um, those bugs next time we have her on board. So this is generally looking pretty good. Um, Whoa, what happened there? You know, undo a few things. What did I do there? I've done something very weird there. Okay. And that's a good point. It's really good to regularly look around your mesh <laughs> because <laughs> it's so easy to screw up your mesh in another place. HP Relax is kind of like the iron tool, yeah, but HP Relax has uh, the added benefit of maintaining the shape while you're relaxing. Which is why I like it. Um, just working on the Mandalorian, well, 
most of the Mandalorian. Those of you who've been following this from the start, I did actually do the helmet, and then I thought, wouldn't it be nice to be able to have a few more um, details so that I can actually do some more interesting framing when I actually do these final renders. So, of course, I went ahead and did the chest plate, and then I did the pauldrons and, you know, put the mud horn onto this one. And then, of course, I thought, oh, well, well I better go down and I better do the strap. And then did the um, the charges last week. And then, oh, no, I've got to do the abs. So <laughs> I kept going further down. If I keep going, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go all the way down. But I think this is probably enough. I can, I can get some reasonable framing um, and uh, get something quite interesting. And I also wanted to use this as a challenge to do to use dynamic cloth in ZBrush to do the cape. I think that should be really interesting. Always trying to challenge myself um, and improve my skills in the software that I have. And looking forward to getting into Substance Painter with this. I've been out of Substance Painter for a while now, um, but definitely unwrap this really neatly in Ryzen UV as well. Um, okay, so what I might do now, I was working on the flak vest um, you can see that's come in and it's actually intersecting a bunch of areas. Um, so what I might do is just get this flak vest right and then I'll um, go in and add a little bit more detail um, and just see what else needs um, any more prep for unwrapping. Thanks Display 3D, I appreciate that. Um, should be nice, should be able to get some really nice close-ups. Not too far, either, because you see he hasn't got a head. <laughs> right, so flak vest. Let's have a look. Let's just solo that. So this was this was um, modeled in cinema. You can see I've stripped out a whole big chunk of the back here somehow. Uh, modeled in cinema. Um, and then I took it across to ZBrush. And I did some sculpting. I'm not 100% convinced that that was really even necessary because I've hardly done anything to it. I've just added a few bumps, really. I did add some... Um, if we just grab the... There we go. Just grab the polygroups. I did add polygroups in ZBrush. And I used that to um, add some extra detail. But then, of course, when I re topologized it, I wanted to retopologize at lower poly, and I lost all of that detail. So, uh, yeah, it doesn't really make sense. And if I was going to do really high detail and then bring a normal map across, maybe that makes sense. But then I'm going to add detail in Substance Painter anyway. So, it's a constant battle to um, to work out the best workflow. And in this case, um, it may even be more suitable for me to go back to the original flak vest. Um, which I do have in a previous project. Let me just open that up. Mando. C4D. You can see I've got hundreds of backups. And, um, let's see if I go back to, say, 34. I haven't even done the flak vest in that one, so close that one. Normally I keep a working folder. Let's go to 35. No, our oh, flak vest, maybe that's it there. I'll try 36 instead. Let's just close that. I like how all I've done is just selected something and it asked me, do I want to save it? I haven't done anything, so no. Uh, let's see, 30, oh, 37 maybe, that's still in the cloud. Yeah, that's right, Scott. Okay, so what have we got in here? Oh, uh, that's the one that I prepped for unwrapping, so that's not the one I want. So it might be 36. Let's grab it from here. You can see how high high poly that um, 
import was. You can see, as I mentioned before, let me just quickly render that. Um, so there's the flak vest that, as, as I brought it across from um, ZBrush. You can see I've, I've added in the, the, the area for the stitching where the pieces of um, fabric join. Let me just turn a couple of things off. Just uh, turn off this. Let's see if I can render this. There we go. So this is how it came across from um, ZBrush. It's really high poly. So I added in some of the um, some of the extra detail, but then I've ended up removing that, most of that detail. You can see even with the lower poly that I had on the previous model, most of that detail has been held in place on the um, the shirt, which is good. I didn't need anywhere near as high poly, but I did lose um, I did lose some of the um, the detail. But I thought I could just quickly put that back in in cinema. So that's how it came across from ZBrush. Let me just hide those. And if you're interested in learning ZBrush, definitely check out Mike Pavlovich's um, uh, YouTube channel. He's at Mike Pav on Twitter. That guy is an absolute gun and very kindly did a live stream, uh, a little stream for me to teach me a couple of things. Um, okay, so there's the vest. There's the vest there, right? And I'd probably, I'd probably be better off keeping that high poly version and then just doing a, a quick bit of um, work on that in, in Cinema 4D. So I'm going to copy that. Need to open up 38 again. There we go. Yeah, modeling is is really worthwhile. I I decided a few, I decided like five or six years ago that I really wanted to get really good at modeling, and um, you know. Texturing and you know, unwrapping and texturing is just sort of a byproduct of that. I do tend to spend most of my time modeling, but I definitely um, enjoy the um, modeling for texturing. Okay, so that's the original one in there. So I might just turn off the other one and just rework this one a little bit. Just grab my uh, reference. Just using Pure Ref, thanks to everyone who suggested that. I just realized the other day that I can actually save my boards, so let me just bring that across. If I right click and choose Load, Load Recent, so I can load that up. Okay, so here's the actual. Um, on screen uh, shirt. You can see how it's got a few ripples in it, um, you know, creases. The, it's quite, the actual sleeves are quite creased. Mine aren't quite as creased as this, but I thought I could add a bit more detail in substance. Didn't quite get in that crease. But then if you look at other examples, they're, they're not as creased, um, even though this is, um, you know, a um, uh, cosplay version. But there are like little extra sort of deeper seams um, where the stitching is. And there's this, this little guy here, which I want to add in. Um, there's the original flak vest. You can see it comes out under the arm. Um, the straps are fairly far across. The second flak vest is darker when he's got the, um, the new armor. You can see it does poke out a fair bit from the chest plate. Um, and there are some um, quite deep seams in there. And the actual strap is quite thick. It is sort of doubled up. I don't know whether I want to do that. Maybe I do. So that's the kind of reference that I've been going on. Hey, Triumph. Um, so let's see if we can work this 
into this. So it's, I think it's important to do the flak vest. All of this area here is going to be pretty much taken up with um, um, with his cape. You see, that's all covered up. Um, very important when you're modeling not to sort of, you know, agonize over things that you're not going to see. Um, although you can see his pouch is covered here, but notice he doesn't have the pulse rifle in that shot. In the shots where he has the pulse rifle, his cape is pushed across. But I did find a shot where the cape is sort of spread out like this, which I like. I like this, and I'm going to hopefully I can do something like that in um, ZBrush. Um, I did find a shot where it's spread out like that, um, but the actual rifle strap is over the top. So it's clipped in here and it sits over the top of the cape. So that's why I want to take all of these prepped uh, pieces across to ZBrush and use them as. Um, uh, with dynamic cloth, so I can actually push and pull the cloth around these uh, underneath and really get that into place rather than pushing and pulling points. So I'm going to have that strap sitting across the cape. So the cape will come up to around, I guess around here. You may see some of the strap, a little bit of the strap, but you won't see a whole hell of a lot of it. And you see a lot more of the um, vest in, in the old armor, which comes down to a point, this, um, this plate here, than you do with this one, which comes further down. So that's some sort of thinking behind how I'm approaching this. Do you see it out of the top of the chest plate? That's a good question. Well, you don't really, because look, it's completely covered, as I mentioned, so that doesn't really matter at all. Okay, I want to get the Mandalorian finished so I can get back onto the motorbike. Now these straps are fairly thick. Um, I may not have made them quite thick enough. Just checking out my reference. I, I guess they're fairly thick. So I don't necessarily want to be in symmetry. Um, let's just hide everything except the shirt. There we go. And the helmet. Don't need that. Okay, I'm going to just save a version of this. Save incremental. And I know I said I was going to start jumping into Blender, but I've been having a go at um, getting into it. And it just really is frustrating having to relearn the basics just to get done what I, I know already know how to do with my eyes closed in the cinema. Um, so I'm kind of... Um, I kind of got a bit sidetracked with that. Maybe I'll get into it at some point, but I'm sitting down and dedicating hours to learning something new from scratch is not easy when I just want to get on with stuff like this. All right, so um, let's have a go at the vest. I'll just put that into subdivision surface. It is sort of poking out a little bit. Now the question is, do I need to puff out the shirt um, to match the vest. Let me just turn on the armor again. I do need um, the cape to come in. And the cape, I don't think, would come in underneath the vest. I think it would be on top of the vest, but underneath the chest plate. So I need the, um, probably the, probably the, give him a bit more of a chest, eh? give him some, some more pecs. It's a bit flat in the old peck area. But for now, I will just... I'm happy with the shoulders. So if I'm in, um, if I'm in brush mode, MC, and I've got smear turned on, you can see I've got smear down here, I've got strength at 100. If I hold down control middle mouse button, I can change the size of my brush. And have I got anything selected? See how when I tried to move those points, it didn't work? That's because I've got a point selected. So with the brush tool, either have nothing selected or only have the points that you want to move selected. So if I deselect that, now I can move that up. That's good. Never have to allow, allow for thickness as well. And see how much easier this is to do 
with low poly than it would have been with that high poly version. I'm going to pull this out. I'm not doing it in symmetry because the actual shirt underneath is not symmetrical. It's funny, after doing so much hard surface modeling, just doing stuff with the brush and just being able to move stuff like this, it's, it's liberating. I still use the brush in, in hard surface, but, um, you know, with hard surface, it's um, not as um, flexible as, you know, organic modeling. With organic modeling, you've got some flexibility. In a hard surface, you know, it is what it is. It has to, it looks like, it's got to look like how it looks in the picture. With organic, if there's an extra crease or an extra fold, or you can usually get away with it. Some people like to use the um, sculpting tools as well. I could actually use the grab tool. Like this, you see the sculpting tools are good too. I've got symmetry. Um, I'd have to come in and turn symmetry off if I did that, but you can do the same thing. But I actually still like the brush tool. I want these to sit fairly high up under the arm. looking better. There was something weird going on down here. I'll have a look at that in a sec. That's good. If you haven't already joined us over on the um, in the new um, uh, Discord channel, make sure you join up for the 3D modeling channel. I've got about... This week we've got about 88 people. Trying to get a regular, um, some regular dialogue going there. Don't have to use Cinema 4D, of course. Okay, let's have a look at um, what's going with this bit down here. There's just a, some extra polygon there. What if I just select this? Just optimize it. That didn't work, All right? Let's see what we've got going on here. One thing I can do, make that a little bit easier to come across to my modeling settings. If you can't see your modeling settings, just come to um, uh, mode and you can choose it from there. So it says modeling. I just got mine as a permanent panel. Uh, mesh checking. There's a little extra edge there. So what I'll do, just use a polygon pen. That's weird. It's not behaving properly. Okay, what I'll do is I'll press UE just to convert that end gon to an edge. And Bring that down. Okay, come on. All right. Now, the reason that's 
misbehaving is because when I use the polygon pen tool, I had reproject result turned on. And what it's trying to do is reproject it onto the shirt. I don't want to do that. I need to uncheck that. Most of the time I do want that on because I'm, you know, I'm retopologizing. That's why that was snapping in the wrong place. Okay, Discord coming right up. One sec. Uh, let's see. Invite people. Copy. Here you go. Join us in the Discord. Okay, so um, I do want to put some um, seams into this as well. Look at the reference again. You're not going to see very much, but there is a seam that sort of runs across there and there. There probably is one that comes just just in there as well. Um, probably comes down to that sort of V shape. That one there. So one, two, three. So there'll be, let's see. There'll be these as one. There'll be this, another one. There'll be one that sort of comes down like this, like that, and maybe a couple at the bottom. I generally don't like to cut into meshes like that, but let's just see if I can get that to work. Just using the polygon pen just to clean that up. Oops, got rid of the, the edge I wanted. Um, so that would, let's see, let's go. Put one across there. I don't want to cut all the way around. So with the loop cut tool, um, just come down and turn on loop range. I've got a range of 10, so it's probably going to be too far still. I'll just bring that down. It's going to put um, four, po cut four polygons on either side of the cut. So let's go three, even two. Okay, and I'll just turn that off. Did that? That's it, okay. All right, just bring that in. Uh, UE, just to convert that in gone. Dissolve that one, holding down the control key with the polygon pen tool selected. So I've got that one across there, just need to have decide how to resolve that. Um, Would be nice actually to put a loop up above here like this. That's a bit overactive that um that tool. Let me just try that again. Loop cut, there we go. So now if I go M E and dissolve that. Now I've got that extra loop up through there as well. I can put that extra loop up. I could just take that up like that. Boop. Boop. So 
So I have to put I'm 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 doing this because I'm going to be putting some seams in and I want it I want it to follow, you know, good topology. I don't want to cut across um, bad topology. Just looking at um, looking at the 3D modeling channel, Fox FX has just posted a um, uh, the a cockpit of an aeroplane, which looks super detailed. And obviously, and of course, the first the first question is, can you show us the topology? Because um, everybody wants to see the topology. You can't you can't hide behind um, clay renders. You've got to show the topology. All right, so that's got that going up pretty well. Um, I'm just looking at these. I wonder if I can... I want to straighten these up a bit. do is I will um, dissolve that dissolve those and I may actually I may put this in symmetry just to save myself some time. Let's have a look and see where that anchor point is. Is that in the middle? It's pretty close. Um, let's bring that down, just press the L key. I'm gonna bring it down so I can see it. Um, with that selected, with the vest selected, come up to symmetry, hold down the Alt key. That will make that apparent. Now, question is, just come back to vest. If I just select this edge here, these points, um, it's on the x-axis. If I come down to set point value, um, and I want to leave everything y and z as they are and just set the x to zero if i just click apply that's good see that drops that on zero and that's a really good thing about working at world zero it just makes it so much easier when you're modeling there you go had the back selected as well so now i know that's correct all right so i'm just going to straighten these up a bit So that one's good. Um, let me look at my reference. Yeah, they come round really straight. Select all these. Might just use HB even distribution just to more evenly distribute those ah that's you anchor all right come on buddy you got to show us your um oh there's your wireframe that looks pretty good yeah see a few complex poles in there <laughs> That's a lot of work you've done. A lot of work. Very nice. That's some nice ZBrush work in there as well. Not in yours, in the in the next one. Okay, so 
I want to have some straighter cuts in here. Um, how many did I say? Probably another two. So if I do a loop cut, it's going to not make it straight. Um, so I just come here. And uncheck visible only for line cut. And just drag that across like that. Now I've got straight cuts. That's come very close to the, under the arm. Jeez, it's just, it's just missed. I can probably come down a bit. Mo slide, slide this one down. Now I want these to be reasonably straight. I wonder if I can use HB lineup. Probably not. That'll um. <laughs> that certainly lined it up. Uh, what I'll do is I'll just press T and just control drag that. I like that. Okay. Important to work at low poly um, when you're doing this kind of stuff. Always keeping it as tidy as possible as you work. And if I have to do some adjustments to the other side to match the shirt topology, I'll do that afterwards when it's out of symmetry. This does have to have thickness, so I don't have to be too anal about this. Um, Okay, so if I bring that up and around, let's see. That's going to take that and give me sort of like this never-ending loop, which is no good. Yeah, <laughs> so there you go. That's what I talked about. Always checking around your model. Obviously, that's the um, the old, the classic unchecking visible only. Undo that. Visible only. Okay, L. I'll go back and do my loop range. Loop range. increase that okay there we go what do we do around here I actually want this one to be there like that. M N to dissolve. Just having a bit of a play with the topology here. That's not going to be very good. So I'll go like this, bring that around there. Uh,
UB, ring select, HB even distribution. Okay. I won't put any, any control cuts in just yet because um, the poly uh, count isn't high enough. All right, let's just bring this back in. That'll work for my seams, I think. If I put an extra loop in here, it will make that pretty tight around there. I do want to see this. I think I'll be able to see that there. That's good. Turn off use loop range. Wow, look at that, it's going all the way through and that's because of this here. So um, that pole is causing some issues. Double click, MO, proportional mode. It's gonna save, I always save before I use a slide tool. Control drag it out and just that will work well. It's going to relax a bit of this. Okay, L. U, B, H, B, even distribution. M, O, point mode. I'm not worried about any of the detail around the back because it completely is, um, will be completely covered with the cape. All right, so I think overall that topology is pretty good. So I've got my um, my loops there, got that one. That one may not be a little, may not be quite high enough. That should be okay. I'll put one down there. So what I'll do is um, you know, I'll put little insets in there. MO, hold down shift and just slide that back like that. Um, and they won't go very deep, but um, what that'll do is it will just give me a little bit of geometry 
to be able to put the stitching in in Substance Painter. I could do all of this with normals, but it's I think it's quite nice to have. And it, it also depends on um, the actual physical thing. If it's a really subtle stitching, then I'll just do it as a material. But if it's if it actually is more obvious, uh, and when you move to the side, you know obviously your normal map will disappear. If it's more obvious, I'll actually add them in. So you can see that stitching in there, or that seam in there, which is quite good. I don't actually have to go um, much lower or much higher res than this. Uh, I'm going to undo. Now what I want to do now is um, add a bit more um, resolution so I can add in my um, corner sharpening and probably detach these straps. So before I do that, I want to make sure everything's sitting correctly. One thing I could do um, is use a shrink wrap. That way I'll know that everything's sitting pretty well. Thanks, illegal criminal. I know, I've never heard of a, a legal criminal. <laughs> yeah, it's important to start with clean topology. Obviously, if you have messy topology to start with, then it just um, problems will compound. So I'll just save this file, save incremental. Um, let's see. I'm just going to group this Alt G under a null and I'm going to drop in a um, shrink wrap holding down shift. That'll drop it under the null. While that's still selected for my target object, I will choose um, my top. Boom, there we go. So that's right on that geometry now. As best as it can be because it's fairly low poly, it is pushing out a little bit. So let's just grab this. Not sure why that's doing that. Let's just have a look. Probably the range. Let me just check the other oh, maximum distance. If I just drop the maximum distance down, bring that. Is it, oh, come on. No, it's not going to do it. It might be being confused by this um, geometry here. Pull that back a bit. There you go. It's okay to pull it back because it's still um, using the shrink wrap. Oh, shrink wrap. I love shrink wrap. It's one of my favorite tools. Okay, so that's that shrink wrap pretty well. Um, so what I'll do now, just save this. Um, with the null selected, because it's got everything underneath it. If I right click and choose current state to object, that will collapse that all down. Just bring that out. Just save this. Delete the original. And there it is. It's right on it. And it wouldn't be, you know, it wouldn't be like a skin tight vest. Uh, it would be popping, bulging up in certain areas. Can see in here how that's sort of you know bulging up and it's um, pushing away from the shirt but it's quite tight around under the arms as you'd expect it to be quite tight around here so what we'll do is we're still um, delete that we're out of symmetry now, so what I'll do is I'll just 
See if I can use HB symmetry. Maybe it'll do it um, automatically. There you go. Yep. Just takes a few steps and does it automatically. But notice how the actual shirt's not symmetrical. So see how that's pushing out now. But I think that's okay. Like we just we just talked about, it's um it's going to happen anyway. If I select, let's see, if I select all of the, the um, where am I? Losing it now. Uh, vest. All in polygon mode and press MZ for normal move. Just move that out on the normals. Just move it slightly away. I mean, I could pull it out like that and then extrude back to add the thickness. Or I can have it just sitting away from the thing, just slightly. Let's put that under symmetry. Bring that out. And if I extruded that, then it would come out like that. Which works pretty well. Obviously, you'd put the um, you'd put the control loops around like that. That looks pretty good. I'm just going to undo that for now. I like to sometimes jump forward a few steps to see whether things are actually going to work. Just remember, if you're interested in um, uh, 3D modeling in Cinema 4D and you, you're a bit of a beginner, check out Making It Look Great. 11, that's, um, there's a link to my left. Where you can get a discount. Now remember, I am still in symmetry here. Now the reason I wanted to stay in symmetry, um, well, I was thinking actually that I would, you know, come here and just do some some borrowed edges in here. But of course, if I do this, that's going to sharpen that corner, but then I lose that edge in order to be able to disconnect that. So. I think what I have to do is, it is stitched together, so it is part of the same thing. Um, I think what I have to do is add in a loop here. Yeah, discount. Just follow the um, link on the right-hand side, Scott. There's a QR code. That'll give you $20 off. Special link for people who watch the live stream. If you haven't watched that and you work in Cinema 4D and modeling, it's going to change your life. We um, created it with Toby Pittman. He, he recorded it. So just playing around here, deciding on the best way to do this um, topology. I need to hide this top. Yeah, that would probably work. They really are two separate pieces. I wonder if I'm, I, I should be really mucking around with this too much. I'm always thinking about if something is connected, then it needs to be connected in, um, in 3D as well. Even though you can, I could hide the connection in the seam. So 
have a look at the reference again. Let's have a look at this one. So, I mean, obviously this isn't the Mandalorian's um, flag fest, but these are two separate things just stitched together. So that will leave me with a triangle. Just thinking about the topology, always trying to improve my ability to um, get the optimal topology. Often, often I overthink it. Um, You know, this is a practice project. So always trying to get better. I'm going to undo that. What I'll probably do is um, get rid of that. Probably do that. Put one in here. Yeah, see, that's much better. I think um, I needed to actually bring this up anyway. Often I'll do, um, I'll lay some topology down and it'll be wrong. I'll know full well that it's wrong, but laying the topology down will give me a better clue about better topology and even if I don't get that right the same day I'll come back to it it's like a puzzle you know you can't find a single piece that you can um, add to the puzzle but then you walk away and then you come back and go bam there's that bit
and it doesn't lay over the top. But remember, it does have it does have like a two layers to it. So first of all, what I'll do is I'll come in and do the back. I'm going to undo that for now because I want to get rid of the thickness. Okay, L, bring that up. So this is a classic technique from making it look grade 11. It's called the borrowed edge. For sharpening corners. MN to dissolve. The same for this side. If I want to maintain the curvature for that one, um, there's a couple of ways I can do it. I can use the loop cut tool and I can come down here and turn on preserve curvature. And then when I click, it will actually pop that out a little bit. So that's one way to do it. Other way is to use the slide tool, MO, hold down control but have preserved curvature turned on so like this okay so kl again sticking out loop there kk that one there There we go, good. Nice one, Scott. M O. Yeah, making look grade eleven give you all of the basics that you need. I still um, go back to it just to remind myself of um, good habits. Okay, so that's good. Um, so I can probably add thickness to this now. I think the poly count is high enough. The edge count. Is the strap wide enough? Uh, let's have a look. I reckon I can make it a bit wider. I can't slide that across, so just, just move it across. Obviously that's the kind of thing that probably should be done under shrink wrap. Just want to chunk it out a bit more. That ought to do. Okay, so I've got that established. Got those uh, nice straight edges established. It's just just for the um, detail necessary. Just straighten that up. Okay, good, so just save that. Hi Armin, yeah, um, it is armor, but I'm just making the, um, the clothing that sits underneath the armor. Yeah, so one, yeah, that's right Samuel, once you've watched Making It Look Great 11, just gotta practice, practice, practice. Um, Check out my website too. This might be helpful for you. Um, let me just open this up. I did these a while back and I, and I do keep adding to them. Um, 
I do keep adding to these. So johndickinson.net, um, if you come down to the actual gallery, the projects, come down to uh, this one here, modeling drills. So I just, you know, find a, a CAD model and then just work out different ways of, or, you know, what I think is the best way to create that. And then just take screenshots of the different steps. Um, so I, this is this is really good for reference for me, just to remind myself about you know, the way to approach things. Um, there's a bunch of them in here. Every, every so often between projects, I'll just do a bunch of these, just small things that don't have to be textured, just to um, uh, improve my skills. I even put little notes in there to remind myself of how I did things. So that's definitely worth checking out. Okay, so it's coming together really nicely. Let's just turn the armor back on. We agreed that it was fairly high, but that's okay because it's going to be covered. Um, you can still see this edge here, which is good. It's Is it tight enough? It may not be quite tight enough um, up under the arms. Now I can probably just use the brush tool for that, MC. Once again, hold down control, middle mouse button, smear mode, and then just, this is what the brush tool is perfect for. And like I said, you could use the grab tool. Just bring this up. And one other, one other thing I'll mention while I'm here, when I brought the, um, the shirt in from ZBrush, and I um, I had a look at the topology. If I just uh, press Alt three to select that, if I come inside, all under the arms, all in this area here was all pinched up. This was all pinched up in here, uh, and I used the brush tool in there as well. So just by um, having that in smooth mode, uh, smooth, and then just doing that. See, so I was able to get rid of all that pinched and overlapping geometry just by using the brush. So the brush is really good for that. You can see some of this is still really quite tight. I can just loosen that up. And that not only makes it easier to, um, you know, it makes it cleaner for when you're texturing, but also makes it easier to unwrap. So you open that up, just bring that brush down a little smaller. So the brush is very handy. There's lots of different settings. There's all kinds of things that you can do with the brush. Generally, I'm using smooth um, and smear the most. That's good. So that's nice and clean up in there now. Yeah, modeling, I, I tend to not stop either anchor. And I tell you what, sometimes I feel so drained. Just forget to even stand up and it's just not good for you. Okay, so it's starting to look good. Um, before we continue with the vest, let me just quickly show you the um, the pulse rifle where it's up to so far. So that's done in, I'm doing that in Moi, uh, Moi, Moi 3D, uh, which launches so quickly. So this is a NURB space modeler. Um, I didn't have to do it in here. I could have modeled it in cinema, but um, I'm trying to learn this as well. So I decided to, um, do it in here because I don't have to get up very close to it. I just want to have, I only actually want this section here. You probably, you're not going to see the barrel, but um, I, um, I've been doing this in Moai 3D and just practicing with that, which is interesting. 
So I'll keep working on that. Because there will be certain things that I do want to model in Moai, even if it's just for um, blocking something out, because Moai has really good booleans. Um, so I could block it out in here, bring that across to Cinema and retopologize um, and keep going, because Cinema hasn't got good booleans. All right, back on to the vest. So we want to extrude it. So I'll select it all. Now I am still in um, symmetry. Yeah, that's, but this is a pretty slow machine actually, Samuel. This is a five year old HP Z840. I got a new Dell um, Inspiron, um, Inspiron? Uh, Dell laptop recently, and it launches even faster, it launches faster than this. This year is my year for, probably about June, is building my own machine. Um, okay, so let's go D for extrude. I want to just check something out here. I'm going to leave subdivision on. Now, when I extrude, see it gives me this crappy geometry just here. What I can do is come up to symmetry and just check. Well, it's actually, it already is checked. Clamp points on axis and delete polygons on axis. So that should it should be deleting that internal face. I don't know why it's not. Maybe because it's in symmetry. Did that work? Oh, there you go. That did work. So that's to, that's removed that internal face, which is good. But what I want to do is have everything else on so I can see how thick I need to make this. Now you'd think a flak jacket would be pretty thick. Let's just add a loop in here. Just to see how that looks. Well, that's probably thick enough, isn't it? Yeah, that's good. Solo that again. See, HP Solo is so handy. See, I use it all the time when I'm modeling. Now, the reason that's only soloed the front face is because that was all that, that's, I had the polygon selected. Now, if I do it again, that'll solo everything. Okay, so let's add a control loop in here. Turn off preserve curvature. Just tapping Q to toggle that subdivision surface. Probably a little too, <laughs> little too straight. Maybe one would be better. It is a is a bad habit of mine to make things too perfect. I used to, when I was putting control cuts in, always make them super sharp, and not really consider that the the original model wasn't the original object wasn't that sharp. See, I had the slide tool there, pressing, holding shift. It doesn't always give you the desired result. Sometimes just moving that out manually is good. Okay, so yeah, but this is thicker. This one is now thicker, so what I want to do, let's see if I can use HP Fong Break Selection. No, it's not going to work. Those angles are too shallow. Select that. Got something odd going on there.
Okay, good. Down. Always looking around with subdivision turned on, checking out the shading. Some of the HB shaders are actually quite good as well. Let me go to my content browser. Uh, there's some good sculpting shaders. This one here is quite good. What I also like about these shaders is that they have um, so they have different color for the no for the reverse normals. So if I just reverse this, you can instantly see that you've got reverse normals using these shaders. But they're, they're quite good for seeing if you've got any lumps and bumps. I'm going to remove that for now. It's taken me quite a while, Samuel, because I've just been doing it on the weekends in my spare time. Um, it's uh, more than a few weeks, but um, it's you know it's a it's a passion project, just a personal project. Let's have a look at this reference again. Which one did I want? Um, Not that one, this one. So remember we said that this has got this is like double layered. So I need to consider that as well. I think those little details can can be quite good. So how am I gonna do that? Let's see. It's thicker than the rest of it. If I do MZ again for normal move and just move that up, will that be enough? Could be. Does it at the back? Let's go edge mode. Now I hold down control. Uh, sorry, uh, click on the edge, hold down shift and control. Yeah, we'll select that. MO to slide. Bring that up to the middle. And if I bring that back, it's gonna it's gonna just do an inset. It needs to be it needs to have a little bit more detail than that. Um, so I put a control cut here. That's looking pretty good. If I really want to get it down in there a little tighter, put another one in. Would this come up this way? Maybe it would. Maybe this one would come up a bit. That's not great. I probably have to put a um, extra loop in there. Like that. And you see I've kept this pretty low poly, which gives me a lot of flexibility. Let's just hide everything else. So that looks pretty good. It can probably come down um, here a bit.
just try to get in a bit closer to this. This is one of the areas that I could probably improve in is getting the uh, getting the anchor point to sit the way I want it to sit before I make adjustments rather than eyeballing it as much. I know I can use axis center. Maybe align the, the Z on selected edge. There you go, that's better. Just need to do that a little more frequently rather than just eyeballing it. That's better. Okay, so if I want to do that little sort of pinching in here, let's have a look at how I might do that. One thing I'll do is I'll bring this, bring these in. Remember, I'm working in symmetry here. I gotta think about one side. Okay, that looks looks separate, uh, like a separate piece of material, but obviously it's one piece. So it's stitched in. Uh, let's have a look and see how we could put that double layering in. Um, probably go all the way up to there. Have a quick look. It'll go all the way to the end. So if I had that like that. Obviously, I haven't done this side yet. I'll just select that. That's going to be covered anyway. Come up here, select to here. And what if I go MS for bevel, solid bevel, uniform, and just add that those extra two edges cut that in there like that I'm just having a bit of a doing a bit of a test here oops I, I did mm and I connected the edges so mn mn M A control, get rid of that. Whoops, didn't want to get rid of that. I hate how it does that. It dissolves the edge and the point. M O. So I'm just wondering whether I can slide that in and a dissolve that I'll clean that up in a minute it obviously gives me a quad like that bring that up okay I wonder if I can bring these both in at the same time. So if I grab that and that, oops, and I haven't done this side yet. One sec. Oh, I can do that in a moment. Grab that 
and that. Now I should be able to, I don't know if I can scale that in, probably not. It's not going to be that even. So what I'll do, select that and that, oh, I keep missing there. And I'm pressing the space bar to drop the tool and pick up the previous tool, MO. Hold down Shift for the slide and just slide that in. How does that look? Uh, that looks pretty good. Q, I might just go in a little further. Let's just give us ourselves a subdivision of two. That looks pretty good. That doubles it up. Probably needs to go all the way to the end. But it's close enough. Grab that. And that. Hold down Shift. Pop that in. Looks pretty nice. Yeah, I'll be unwrapping um, and I'll be doing, I'll be streaming everything I do in Substance Painter as well. Yeah, so I know I'm a, I'm a bit rusty in Substance Painter, but I've been using it for quite a while. It'll be fun to get back into it again. I don't like this polygon here it's really twisted I don't know if it really matters let's just check the fong it's only at 40 I'll put it at 80 but that looks pretty good just wonder if there's a an even better way to do that Obviously, that puts a couple of triangles in there. Um, anyone been watching The Stand on um, Amazon Prime? Read that book years ago. It's, it's fun to see it actually um, in... Uh, made into a TV show. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's right. There's a six-sided pole. That, that was the problem with um, the problem with doing that um, that cut there. I'm still I'm still in in just sort of testing mode. See if I turn on mesh checking, you can see that big pink pole. I'm just testing this to see a better way to approach this. Obviously, the original way I didn't have that. Um, so maybe if I Cut that in, cut back into here, get rid of that.
and obviously I'm agonizing over something that's not necessary just thinking best way to approach this I'll probably pinch this up in here I think I'll, what I'll do is I will leave it as it was for now. So just bring that just back over a bit. Because obviously under subdivision that um, that shape will be smoothed out. It is still a quad though, and I think that's probably good enough. What have I missed here? Uh, let's see. to think about that because I've, I might be able to find a better way to do that but also obviously depends on how close you're going to get because that looks fine it's fairly rounded I wonder whether I need to put a control loop in in there yeah that looks good I mean the, from that angle it looks great you see I see see that doubled up strap that looks pretty good. If I just pull this face a little bit more out, MZ. That normal move is so good. Probably a bit too much. Yeah, that's okay. I've been reading some books lately. Yeah, I've, I've read a few books, but not. You're talking books in general. Are you talking, um, uh, you know, software-related books? It's 
storm that's just messing with this. It's just annoying me at the moment. That looks better. I don't read any um, software related books these days. It depends what you're into. I've actually been getting into a few um, uh, biographies lately. Um, tell you what I enjoyed. Uh, I've got it right here. Um, that's the last book I read, which is Michael J. Fox's book, which is really interesting. And before that, I read Gary Newman's autobiography, which is really interesting. The godfather of electronic music. And uh, next next one is Neil Young. So I've been buying a few books lately. A few um, musical heroes of mine. And Okay, I think that's fine. Um, got it in symmetry. Quickly clean up the back. I'll just add in the seams. So it's coming to here. Now that's got those that issue there. So Biology. Wow. How did I do that? I always forget. Okay. We're not going to see the back because it's going to be covered pretty much. So what I can do now is just go in and add those seams.
MS. I'll make sure I've got everything selected. Now I don't actually need the all of the um, inside face because we're not going to see that and that'll be wasted um, geometry. So before I do this, what I might do is just come in and select all of this. Get everything I can. Get all that. And what I'll do is I will MW inner extrude. It's going to give me a bit of a mess in this area here, but that's okay. I need a little bit of inner extrusion. Turn off the symmetry. Something like that. Delete. That means I haven't got to unwrap that. And also it won't take up space on my UV setup. Just select these. Leave those ones out of out of it. MC. Just smoothing those out. There we go. Make sure everything else is tidy. Just loosening all that up. Okay, so now I've got that inset. So when we turn everything else on, if there's anywhere where we might see a little bit of the inside face, we're covered, but we're not going to have all that extra geometry. Toby's been pretty busy. Um, I'm working on the motorcycle, but I've got sidetracked by this. So I'm going to get back onto the motorbike once I finish this. Okay, so got those selected now and I haven't got to worry about those that inside face. Turn off mesh checking, turn on my symmetry. Turn on subdivision by pressing Q. Just save MS bevel. So I'm in solid mode. Uh, I'll leave fixed distance on. And mitering is uniform. Let's just see how this goes. Okay. Double click to select those loops again. Oops. There we go. Try MO, slide tool with shift held down. If I can just move those in on their normals. That's pretty good. It's quite nice actually. You've got that sort of soft fall off. Um, I wonder though, maybe I should, um, let's see. 
undo that. I may continue to do that way, but I'm just going to try this option. Bring that fairly large. MS again. Bring that in again. Dissolve these ones. Keep deselecting this one and this one. MN UL. M Z So rather than um, shifting the edge in, I'm shifting two loops in. And that gives me slightly tighter result. And I can run that stitch in Substance Painter straight along this strip. And what I'll be wanting to do in um, Ryzen UV is make sure that these strips um, are perfectly straight. So then I can easily run a strip, run a run some stitches along there in Substance Painter. So I think that's pretty good. Now I have got a problem here. I'm going to check out what's going on there. I have no idea what happened there. Let's undo for a sec. I think they crossed over. Can't do that. Let's try that again. Okay, got those. So all that's really done is it's just added an extra loop in there. It makes them a bit tighter. Okay, that's good. Oh, I've forgotten one. Okay, try that again. Always got to be looking around making sure everything's selected correctly. I think there's one in the back here too. I might just add one there. Let's put that in first. Just in case we see anything um, under the cape. That one, that one, that one, one, and that one. Okay. Now I'll try it again. MS. Bring that out. So what I might do is I'll set selection. Now try it. Now I restore selection. Did that work? No, it didn't work. So I was going to be smart there. Um, no, it didn't work. All right, that's fine. Just dissolve these again. MN, okay, that didn't have that problem this time. UL, loop selection, just click in these loops. And, whoops, forgot that one there. Now 
you out. And Z, keep it under subdivision. Now, obviously that's actually not very tight there. I don't care because you're not going to see it. Just taking that in a little too far. Cool. I can probably just uh, deselect everything. MC, uh, come into smear and just straighten that up a bit. So see how we had to go back and adjust the original topology to make those lines straight? And even then, subdividing it has just add a little bit of a curve to them, but I think it's good enough. Obviously, putting those extra loops in is going to just add a little bit of pinching. Yeah, but that's okay. I'll just straighten those up a bit. And I can add a bunch of um, detail in um, uh, Substance Painter. Now we have got a pole there. I'll fix it up later. What I'll do is once that's out of symmetry, I can just clean that up. So that looks pretty good. So with everything else turned on, not that one, I want armor. It's a little bit it's sticking out a little bit. Um, so what I'll have to do, I mean, obviously the armor can't change because it's it's metal. So what I'll have to do is just push that in underneath, which means I've got to push the shirt in underneath as well. I'll just use the brush tool for that and just pull it out in certain places. Because even using shrink wrap, you can see, uh, because we put it in symmetry, it's working perfectly on this side, but it's not quite right on this side. So it's still under symmetry. So I'll take that out of symmetry and I'll, um, I'll just fine tune that. Yeah, this could be a little more rounded there. So bring that back a bit. So I'll have to just adjust that with the um, with the brush tool. But it's definitely working. I'd have to hide it under here. But obviously I don't want it to go under the shirt. So the shirt also will have to be pushed back a little bit just to account for the um, uh, account for the armor like that. So that will just sit back a bit. Vest will come underneath. Maybe just pulled out a little bit there. Something like that. And maybe up a bit. That's good. See, the brush is great. And it's much better with, obviously, low low poly count. And I'll have to do the same on that side too. So, so bring that. It's in symmetry at the moment, so I've got no choice. But, but that's it. So I'm actually getting close to being ready to doing the cape now. So I'll do that next. Um, and I'll probably do that in... Um, I'll do that in ZBrush. I'll have it. I'll, I'll attempt it this week, and if there's anything I can glean from it, or if I can show you anything live, I will, if it works out. Otherwise, uh, this time next week, I'll have the cape finished, and um, the next 
session we'll be unwrapping all of this in Ryzen UV. Excellent, where's my helmet? Just look at that. Now I've got materials on here because um, that's for the unwrapping in Ryzen. The helmet's already prepared. Cool. Uh, let's see. Have I been doing some client work? Yeah, if you want to see um, stuff I've made for clients, just go to my website. Um, just go to johndickinson.net and you'll, you'll see work that I've done for clients and also personal projects. So when you when you click on one of these, um, it'll say down here whether it's a personal project or whether, you know, who the client was. Okay. So, and it'll also be, in some of them I've got um, process. So if you just click through, you'll see um, uh, the approach. So I'm going to sign off for now. So thanks for hanging around um, and I'll see you in the next live stream.